as coloured. Um, and this will be a really short talk just about my sort of experiences of using the GRC API to solve a thing that was pissing me off a bit. Um, so it started when I was in Brisbane, at the Brisbane Functional Programmers Group back in about 2013, and Sam Roberts did a talk about his experiences of working at Standard Chartered, where I now work. And he said that people who were learning Haskell for the first time, uh, the ones who were using the visual environment seemed to go better than the people who just thrashed away with you know, VMware, Emacs, or other sort of horrible things. Um, and so I, I wondered if there was anything I could add to my sort of way that I develop, because I'm extremely old school and I have an X term, you know, I have VI, and I don't use any plugins, and I thought maybe I should add something and, you know, be a bit more modern about what I'm doing. Excuse me, can you talk a little bit on... Can I stand up what you need to? Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> So, yeah, the other, so Haskell's got a pretty good type system that does a lot for you, and I thought you should be able to leverage that in the process of doing the coding. Um, so programming is hard, and my brain is small, so those things kind of come together. And I thought maybe I can write some kind of BIM plugin to just help a little bit, you know, make the daily sort of tasks a bit easier. I think at the time I was playing with Yesod as well, and there were just millions of functions, and they've all got weird little names, and so... This is one example that you might be writing some code, I was like, you're reading someone else's code, and you see a thing that says map m underscore, and you think, what's that? It can't be too hard to look this up. If you go to Hoodle, which is on the web, it'll tell you that it's from the Prelude, or maybe control.monad, or maybe it's from data.foldable, and you might start wondering what's the difference between that. Uh, and at the time, Hoodle didn't tell me about mapm underscore from data but conduit or this, which was the thing that I was actually using at the time. Because obviously Google doesn't know what's on your computer. Um, and so I thought <coughs> maybe the simplest thing you could do is use GHC mod, which is fantastic, just to have a look at the info thing and then surely you could just look up the documentation. How hard could it be, right? And it turns out it's a complete mess. So something like mapm is in control.monad, and I think that matches correctly for this. Um, but then if you ask for some other symbols like map, it'll tell you ghc.base, and there is no actual Google, I mean, package URL that matches ghc.base. Like, there's no package called ghc.base. And so, initially, so straight off the bat, I realized that things are not going to work properly. Um, so in the first example, you try to send yourself to that URL which goes to control dash monad, and the other one, oh, and the, the other thing is that you don't know which version of anything you have it, so like, depending on which version of GHC, maybe you've got base 4.6, or maybe you've got base 4.7, which relates to GHC 7 point something, so, you know, that's, as a user, you're just not going to have this kind of stuff in your head. Um, and then this is just another sort of example that sometimes it will tell you, the info command will tell you things that are not exactly right either. Like if you ask about head, it tells you that it's defined in gfc.list, but that's not right because it's, um, well, it's not really correct. It's actually from data.list. If you want to go to pack, uh, package and look at the paddock documentation, it will be data.list. So, I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to use the GHC API and sort of query you know, the source code a bit, and maybe the compiler can give me a little bit more information about where, where stuff is. Um, and so you can quite easily, using the, the API, ask for a few things like, tell me the imports that are in the module, and we'll tell you stuff like, do you have import data about this? Um, you can ask for the names in there. So if you just have a string like H-E-A-D, you need to map that to something else that corresponds to something in the GHC um, syntax tree. Um, and you want to find out where it's imported from, not where it's defined, because where it's defined could be GHC or both, where it's imported from could be sort of any other stuff. And then you've got to get a nice URL. Um, when I wrote this, I was spending most of my time working in cafes because I was a stay-at-home dad. And so I had little 3G data and I always wanted to have a local, locally built documentation, not something on 
package. So, um, basically by reading the GRGC mod source code, I found that it's not too hard to sort of load up a module. Um, you do everything in a GHC monad, so you have to do a run GHC at the start. Oh, nice. um, and then you can just set a bunch of things like dynamic, the session flags are things like where your Cabal sandbox is and other kind of finicky things. You sort of initialize stuff and then you tell it, you know, guess this target, which is this file that you have, and try to load it up. And if you get these things slightly wrong, you get GHC panics, which is really, really nice. Um, and yeah, so the, the API gives you stuff that will get the summary of a module, it will parse it for you, type check it, and then desugar it. And that's all you really need to do to start poking into the inside of your module. And there's ways to do this without fully compiling the whole thing so that it goes a little bit quicker. Um, and I found just by reading all of the GHC API documentation, which is a lot of there's a lot of it that doesn't tell you what anything is, like it just gives you the function signatures. I found a thing called mod guts, which is the guts. And the guts has everything, like everything that kind of gets carried along as GHC compiles something. And inside the guts, I found a thing called the global reader environment. And that thing is basically full of the names of everything that GHC has found. And you can't print anything sort of by default. You have to use a show S doc, which uses the D flags, because apparently that context changes how you might view stuff. Um, but once you do that, you get millions of things like this. And I thought, oh, this is what we actually want. So this IHZ is some kind of internal thing, which was telling me that uh, map, which is defined in GHC.base, is imported from the Prelude. And that's exactly what you need, that you want to tell the user map that comes from the Prelude, and then go to the right documentation. And basically, we try to get from MAP at that point in the text to that entry in this the guts of GHC, and then to the URL down the bottom there. Um, and so, in slightly more detail, I mean, you don't have to fully get all of this, but you partially compile the thing so you can get a bunch of names. Um, you get fully qualified names like ghc.list.head and then you have to kind of match it to a name you actually have, like head. And there's a little bit of weirdness with that because apparently the order that you load the modules can affect which names kind of exist in the space. Uh, you sort of work out where it really came from. Um, this will go away in the next version because we don't really need to use GHC package, but basically you want to be told uh, the package thing that it's in, like, I don't know why it's Haskell 2010, and then one of those URLs. And so, like, for this example, this is on my file system because when I wrote the slides, I was using GHC 784. We have a question. Yeah, so, <coughs> yep. so how much of the compilation pipeline do you really run? Because in your example, you have the the parser, type yep. checker, and then the yep. They're just running up to the <coughs> rename or should be enough, right? Um, as far as I could tell, to get the mod guts... Yeah, but you don't really need the mod guts, you just need the reader environment, right? So yeah, once so you where's, but rename where's the module, yeah. you should have that. But where can you get... So then here, that's coming out of the guts. Yeah, so I think, well, I could be wrong, but I think I tried doing less of this, and I didn't get the names that I wanted. Mm -hmm. But that could be wrong, because this is like So, yeah, so, so I, I, I think what you should try and see is if instead of doing a full type check module, if you yep. manually run only the renamer, yep. then you, know, you, you run the RM and then whatever you get out of that, you yep. have the you should have this reader and wire man. Okay. That would be good. Because, yeah, that really takes. Sure that it's possible. Okay. Type of record that type checking and renaming. Well, okay. Uh, 
So d you can definitely okay. You can definitely like get between the two because I've done this before when I did my own type of yeah, yeah. So the the rename I use in case is rename and then I have a complete picture. And I would be able to do that, but it takes a lot more algorithm than just putting the two together, of course. But uh, yeah. but but yeah, but even then, okay, even even if you decide to do the, the type checking. Mm -hmm. Even then, you shouldn't need to do the issue already. Yeah, I don't think. But, but I, I think uh, you yeah. should be able to push it in. On I was not aware that you. I would also assume that you don't need to be sugary, but I was not sure. aware you can do the read in some type checking. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, show me afterwards where it is, and I'll, I'll happily remove code. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you will be adding more to it because it's, it's not as. Straightforward as uh, it is, but you will, you will be running less on the compiler at yeah. time. And that your code will work with like non well type. But there's another question I have. So, yeah. with this current setup, uh, this only works if the module that you are writing yeah. type checks. Yeah. Which is another problem. Yeah, which is a huge problem. So, yeah. submit a pull request. Sorry? Submit a pull request. <laughs> Uh, so, anyway, that's that's my feeling of the code at the moment. That we're sort of looking for something. I think that the GHC API should be able to hand this information to you like very clearly. But that's that's kind of how it feels. Um, so, in terms of using it, um, I've written a Vim plugin. Um, I've got his name. He wrote this other guy wrote an Emacs plugin, so everyone can use it. And that's an example, like you can just ask it to print the URL at the bottom or you can make it load it up in your browser. So there I was looking at uh, something something from data.list, uh, dl.length. So it handles all the sort of weird things like if you import qualified data.list as dl and then ask what dl.length is, it can sort of go back and work out what that was. Um, that was just, so the word just came from the prelude. Um, if you import, so if you're using a qualified name, that's kind of the same thing, like safe. Oh, so in this case, I didn't have the locally built documentation for some reason, so it's sending me to the equivalent URL on package.haskell.org. So it does its best to go local and then go up. Um, that was, I think that's a bit of the code itself, so it's like poking into parsec. I mean, it's just looking this stuff up. Um, and I'm not Shadowing. Yeah. 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 It doesn't do very well for locally defined stuff. So if you use it in your own code yeah. and say, "Where did this thing that I made come from?" Also. No, no. But I mean, if, if you find something called "hand," yeah. Do you think that you are looking for the for data that that Probably. Yeah. So it just doesn't do local stuff. It's it's more for like, you're using a big library and it's full of crazy stuff and you don't know where anything is. Um, yeah, so I've found it useful myself. Um, I've been doing development. Someone wrote an Emacs, uh, David Christensen wrote an Emacs plugin. Um, and there's weird corner cases with the, the module system, like you can just have, I don't know, it does, I, I feel like the module system kind of grew organically and people can think about how things were going to go. Um, and basically, GHC mod was very useful. Like it, it does a lot of the sort of dull work of finding where your sandbox is and what the, all the package names are and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. It's on GitHub and yeah, or on package. It's pretty exciting to use. If you were. So like that's an example, like you think, where does default runner come from? And you go, tell me, tell me where it comes from. Yeah, there it is. So that's good. Because at the moment there's no way to get that. Because every every name in Haskell is like some little simple word, like map default or something. You know, where does it all come from? Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Any questions? Call requests? I wonder if you could put a call at the burger and then somehow get everything which is in scope.
right there, then a get a reader environment or some such mm -hmm. in that particular place, yeah. and then look up things there, and then shadowing the but I'm, I'm not sure you can do that, I'm just saying that yeah. this could be an angle of effect. I also, the other day, I found a function that seems to talk about does a symbol get exported from a module, which I just never saw. So there's probably other things around the place that might be good. But I think really the, the GHC API could keep this kind of stuff if they connected a bit better the documentation to the, everything. You know, like this isn't rocket science, really. They're just trying to find the documentation. Oh, and if anyone does this in a different way, I'd like to know. Like, how do people find things? Do, is everyone just psychic and knows where everything is? And everyone's just that good, they've memorized all the documentation. Oh. Nope. Okay. Thank you.